Hey, this is Steve with Best Bid. I hope you're having a great day today. I'm not going to be trying to sell or demonstrate software today. I'm just going to give you a tip on measuring your branch circuits when you're using an on-screen takeoff. This tip's not going to be software specific and it'll work on any software title that you may have, whether you're using AccuBid, McCormick, EBM, IntelliBid, Esticom, Red Rhino, or any other product on the market, it's not that important. So why am I creating this video? Simply because I really hope that it helps you understand this simple hack to keep you on track. I hope this helps you to start to understand that doing your takeoff on your computer screen doesn't need to be complicated. You can always feel free to reach out to me or, or on advice on estimating or estimating software uh, anytime that you'd like to. The electrical trade has been great to me and my family. And I'd like to, some way to pay it back. So feel free to give me a call or send me an email anytime that I can be of service or answer a question for you. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please let me know. Uh, and so we'll get started shortly. Thank you and have a blessed day. Hey, this is Steve with Best Bid, and today I'm going to give you some tips about how to use your home screen takeoff, doing measurements and keeping up with it, uh, whether you want to admit it or not. Most of us had issues when we first started trying to work with parts of screens and not used to doing that, and a hard time keeping up with where we were. Uh, so it's not uncommon. I'm just going to share with you today uh, a way that I started doing it. When I first started, I don't have to do it anymore, but this helped me to keep up with what I was doing. So I have pre-created, just to save some time, notes. And these, these have nothing to do with anything. They're just text. I wrote one that's called done, called finished, complete, whatever you want to. It just lets you know that you have completed that task. Then I've gone through here and I've created junction boxes of how I'm going to run the home runs. So I looked real quick. Uh, I should have studied this plan before I started, but I went through and found that the, the panels are real close and that there are DP3 panels right here. That's where most things come from. So I grouped my home runs the best I could quickly. So I have a deep P3, 2, and 12 is going to catch this circuit and this circuit. And then the other ones go to this LP panel. So nothing else in that general area. And I'll come down here, and here's 39, which is going to be several places, best I remember. Uh, 24 is going to be like right here. And 22 will be here. So I might not do all these. I'm just going to show you how I did it. Um, give you an idea. So what I'm doing is I'm catching three circuits out of one home run. So here's 37, 17, 23. So there's my 37, 17, and 23. This one only has 6 and 21. This one has 29, 25, and 15. There's 29, 25, 15. So that'll get you an idea of how I started. So now on our software, it's as easy as going to measure and creating what you want to run to these. So I'm going to start off just by putting half inch EMT with three number 12s. I'm going to run a half inch EMT with five number 12s. And for my home run, home run, I'm going to run three-quarter EMT with seven number 12s. I may make mistakes as I go, but the idea is just to show you what I'm doing. So here's my first home run. It's only going to, let me go through here and change the color so you can see the different runs. So the first one's going to be a five. 
I need to set the scale real quick for this purpose. I'm going to say this door's three foot. So now I'm going to measure this home run. I'm just going to take it back to the panel, TP3. On our particular software, uh, to catch your up and ups and downs, all you have to do is activate that button, and then you can add. You see, I added ten, and I added another ten for the drops. I really didn't need a drop for this other side, but I just have a little fudge. So now I'm going to. I know I'm catching two and twelve. So I want to just cover up 2 and 12, and I know that they're finished. Now, what I like to do on our software, you have the option to have 10 foot per receptacle if you wanted to. That's to get you above the ceiling, so you don't have to worry about your ups and downs. But I do like to get it a little closer, so I'll fudge it a little bit just to add a little bit of extra just so I'm not going to run short. So now I can see that I finished those two. So now this one's going to be uh, a seven. So I'll just click here and I'll go back to here. Not that straight. I'm going to Add my extra, and now I've got to catch 39. I know this one's 39, and you can do this a different way if you'd like to. I'm just kind of showing you, and this is 39. Now, I already have the drop down covered, but if I didn't, all I'd have to do is activate the down button and click it. So now we're through with 39. And then we'll go to 24, which I would come out of here and just go this way. And then 22. I might have possibly run five wires here and then three wires down. They're so close, it really wouldn't make any difference. So now I can go back to my notes and just simply say I'm done with 24 and 39. There's a 39. There's a 39. And uh, 22. So that kind of gives you a good idea. As I'm going through here, I wanted to pick up just a hair more um, for that one right there. So this is not to get a perfect everything. It's just to kind of show you a way of doing it. So here is 17. Thirty-seven. All right, so I would do, I'm going to do this one backwards. I'm going to go for here for the thirty-seven. I'm going to pick up a five to go to seventeen. Then I'll pick up a three again to go to nine. In reality, I'll catch this one in the wall, so I'm just going to have a little bit of fluff. Now I need to run the home run itself. So I'm going to run it back to this wall and to this panel. I'm going to activate the up and down, and I'm going to add a couple. So now I can go back to my notes. And we just finished 
17, 37, and 23. I don't want to be over repetitive on this, but that's, that's the way that it would work. And that way you can easily keep up with what's going on. So here's one that's going to be uh, five wire. I'm probably oversimplifying this for some of you, and I'm probably not going simple enough for some of you, but maybe you'll get an idea. If you don't, you can get in touch with me, and I'll be more than happy to, to uh, show you in greater detail. So now I would go and put done on these two circuits, keeping up with it. I know what I've caught, and I know what I need to catch. So the next one would be uh, 29, that's here. 25's there, so I'll do one more and then I'll stop. And you can run this in any way that you would install it. This is more of an idea and a concept than it is uh, anything else. So I'm going to catch the 29 here. Catch the 25 here. And then the 15 is over here. And then again, I'm simply going to say done, done, and done. So you can you can get an idea of uh, how you can do it and how you can keep up with it when you're starting these notes. Again, that doesn't mean anything. It just lets you know if they're if they've been finished or not. So I can see that this needs a three, five, and thirty. So I need to do that to catch the rest of these. So I hope that gives you an idea, and I hope that uh, you learned a little bit today. Maybe something to try. Maybe you can modify it to suit you. As always, have a blessed day and thank you for watching.